I saw that, I think it was on Governor, it might have been on Governor Murphy's Instagram feed that New Jersey was looking for um, election day workers. And I decided to, to call and give it a shot. So uh, you fill out your form online and then they contact you. And I think that's, I think a lot of people do that step. They mean well, you know, um, and then you are assigned, you have, you have to be a voter in your county. So they go and check. And then you get contacted by um, the election, uh, the county election office to go for training. And, you know, you go, it was a Saturday morning, you go from nine to 12. And there were five, six people showed up, you know, and they were expecting a lot more because everything is electronic now. You know, it used to be, at least for Passaic County, you would uh, go into your voting on, you know, you would go to vote and you would, they would check your, your signature in the book, but now it's all online. So it's a little e-poll book that actually is an iPad. It's an Apple iPad and you're trained on how to use it, trained on how uh, to check in voters who are registered and create the voting, um, the ballot activation cards from this machine that's connected to a printer. Um, and then, you know, so you're learning all of that, how to work that machine and how to deal with all the different types of voting situations that might come up. But 90% of what you're gonna be dealing with, we've been told are people that are registered to vote and they're coming there that day to vote. But it's really interesting because we also learned, you know, every polling place, at least in Passaic County, has two voting machines. They're electronic voting machines. And you're, you gotta get there at five o'clock in the morning and you're there till probably 8.30 at night with a one hour break, you get a $300 uh, fee. So you're really doing it because you wanna do it. And there's probably going to be hopefully two or three other uh, people like me that are there to, to run the election. I mean, you have to do everything from getting there at 5 a.m., physically setting up the voting uh, booths, the electronic voting booths. You have to set up the e-poll books, connect it. You have to, you know, you're going to get this case, this sealed case that you have to open up. And it's got, uh, you know, provisional ballots in it. It's got these these electronic e-poll books. It's got the voting authority slips. And it also has um, a wireless router that you have to set up so that everything works at the polling place. I always just, oh, voting works. You just go in, you sign, you do it. I never really thought about what happens after that. How do the votes get counted? Who are these people that are working at the polling place? Like, how does it all work? I never thought about it. And I don't think most people really do, which is why there's so much ignorance around it and so much noise and so much so much drama, really. They seem to be taking the perspective of trying to create no drama. And the way they're doing that is almost every single person comes in, even if you're sitting at your little ebook and it tells you they already voted, you tell them, well, it says here you already voted. Well, if they give you a hard time, there's a whole provisional ballot system. So that's for anybody that moved but insists they should vote there, anybody who's at the wrong polling location and they don't want to leave because we're instructed to, uh, there's a system within the little ebook of uh, finding where they should vote and even giving them directions. But if they say, no, I'm here, I want to vote now, everything is provisional ballot, which is a system where on your little ebook, you it's going to flag they already voted they were mailed a ballot they don't live here anymore there's about 10 different scenarios and depending on their reaction you can say okay you can do a provisional ballot today and so your little little e your little e poll book prints out um basically the same almost the same kind of voting ticket for everyone else which is a voter voter a ballot activation card but theirs is different they go over to the voting machine, so they're acting, they're going almost through the same process as somebody same day uh, voter. And they go to the machine, they go in, they, they have to put the ticket into the machine like the rest of us, but theirs is different. And they vote, but their, their ticket comes out of the machine, whereas the rest of ours stays inside of the voting machine. And then they have to bring that 
uh, ticket back to the desk where they came in, where the election workers are, and they have to sit at a table where there's this little privacy screen and they have to fill out an envelope. Um, they have to put their ballot inside the envelope, seal the envelope, and it's kind of almost like an affidavit type thing on the outside of the envelope that they have to fill out. And so they're still going through the process and their vote is still another, whether they voted once already, or if they're one of these other situations, they're, they're voting that way. And those get sealed up in a bag. And cameras are not allowed. You're not even allowed to take any photographs at all. No one is allowed. The only people that are allowed in the voting into the polling place are people that are voting, uh, voters with young children, voters who need assistance but the, even the, the person going into the and the only certain people are allowed to have assistance if you're if you're disabled uh or if you can't read or write and there are forms that you have to sit at that table where the privacy screen is and you have to fill out forms and then so that person is allowed to go in the voting booth with you it's because the last time i i voted I, I think it was the presidential i was in a rush i went in I voted and I left, but there was a person kind of intimidating standing there. And I believe it was a challenger, but they were not following the rules and the, and the election workers were not kind of enforcing the rule. So a, a challenger, uh, so a, a party or a candidate is allowed to be a challenger. So, or so someone from a party, from the Democrat, Republican, whatever, is allowed to have a challenger. So there could be two challengers there or the, the candidate itself themselves can be a challenger or have a representative. And they have to have, have applied to the county to be a challenger and they have to go into the, to, they have to present to the election workers, the polling workers that day, uh, their signed slip and they have to wear a badge and they have to sit at a certain table and they're not allowed to leave that table. Yeah, I mean, you can have, it's, it's a great system that, okay, yeah, you can have a challenger. And it's real. I said, well, what does the challenger do? They're really just watching. Uh, but if, say, someone comes in and they say, that person can't vote, they're not even 18. It's a system where all, <laughs> all of the election workers have to agree to allow the challenge. Or, or I guess there's, there's forms that have to be filled out on the spot. And then it's discussed among the election workers and the challenger whether this vote should be challenged. And then there's a process for that. That actually might be why I'm going back to the training again to get more of what to do if that occurs. Because I feel like in this, in this environment, it can happen. And this machine, these machines are fascinating. I mean, it's all electronic, but I love that you will see a paper receipt of how you voted and you can vote again you know, through a, a, a process where the vote, uh, election worker has to spoil your vote and you can go vote again if you made a mistake or or forgot to answer maybe a public question, you can do it again. So they've really kind of worked through a lot of the scenarios. They really have. Even people that show up at the wrong polling location, if you can't get them to leave, they can do a provisional ballot. So I think, you know, I wonder, are people gonna try to hang out there that don't belong there? But, you know, we're told who's allowed to be there and who's not. Now, I think also there's a unwritten check and balance in place. The fact that you're being paired with other election workers that you don't know. So you're not buddies. So if someone's doing something wrong or you're questioning it or I'm doing something wrong, you know, you figure someone's going to tell you. You're not going to be like, oh, OK, that's my friend. I'm not going to say anything, even though they let that person in. You know, it's just it's I think it's kind of there's a lot of fairness built in into this system so that it works. Apparently every polling location in the county will, will have someone like me who's new, but they will also have um, experienced election workers as well. So you're not kind of running the show on your first go, you know? Sister, I told her a couple weeks ago, I'm gonna be an election worker. She goes, I hope they give you a bulletproof vest. And it's, it's funny, but it's not. And I think another reason I decided to do this was I thought, maybe a lot of people aren't doing this and they really, really need people, you know? It's not only a long day during the week, but it could be dicey. What they did tell us is the, the, the people that are allowed to be there will be obviously election workers, people voting, young children, people authorized to assist disabled people to vote, but any county election workers can come in, the challengers, 
and police officers. So I assume there's going, I'm sure towns are on heightened alert and they're going to be at polling places. And we, we're giving a, 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 a list of numbers to call for various problems. Who to call for this? Who to call for that? At the end of the night, there's a whole process to shut the voting machines down and to seal various parts of the machine so that they, it, so if they're that they're tamper proof, and all of the votes are not only calculated on paper, the paper that you see when you're voting and then goes down into this other uh, locked receptacle, but all your votes are also recorded on a USB flash drive that you have to remove and seal in a bag, but then they're also recorded on the hard drive of the voting machine so there's a lot of checks and balances so that that's all I, I thought that I was so impressed with that